Hey everybody. Today's video is a little bit different. It's actually just a sped up video of a Facebook Live that I downloaded. It's a project that I did with my team on our normal Sunday Facebook Lives. And I had posted online and gotten such a good response to it that I decided to download and edit the video just so that you could watch the process of how to transform this sort of bold lined stamp image into a no line watercolor. So my apologies that it's not in my normal high definition format and also that my desk was a bit of a mess <laughs> because it was just a normal Sunday for me. I hadn't planned on making this into a video. I was just chatting with my team and having fun. So you can kind of watch my process as I go through this and I'll tell you if I'm doing anything super interesting, but I'm probably not. I stamped the image from the set that has the flowers in it, which look like roses to me, just in Daffodil Delight like I normally do when I'm doing no line watercolor for florals. And it's sort of a corner image. It has sort of a 90 degree look to it. So I thought it'd be nice to stamp it in both corners. What I didn't know at the time is <laughs> because of the way that I painted this image, it took me quite a while to finish both of these because I wanted to be pretty detailed. And so my poor team didn't get the sped up version. They got the real version. We were just chatting and, and I was painting. But you could easily just do one of the corners and not do both. And you would have a pretty quick watercolor project. I'm using the Ultimate Mixing Palette Suggested Colors of Daniel Smith from the Jane Blundell reference guide, which I will link you to below the video and on my blog. I had come across this ultimate mixing guide pretty early on when I had my, I have a watercolor split group where we split tubes of Daniel Smith paint so that everybody could affordably get the whole collection. And in that group, I had run across Jane Blundell in this mixing palette. And so while I was acquiring the rest of the Daniel Smith line, I made myself the palette. I poured full pans of the 15 colors that she suggests. And I tried to work with them. I even took them on vacation to Santa Fe with me. And... I just couldn't make anything pretty with it. The colors seemed like not the colors that I normally used. And I just wasn't comfortable with it. And that is when I downloaded her, the PDF version of her guide to the Ultimate Mixing Palette. And I was completely blown away at how many beautiful colors you can mix with just these 15 pigments. So I'm a complete convert and so much so that I ended up buying the paper copy along with my friend Lori so that I could have it with me when I traveled because the PDF will just come up in iBooks and for me that is not the best way to look at swatches. So we both decided since we wanted the book that we would each buy ourselves the book and then we would call it our Christmas present to each other. So that's what we did. So you'll see me do this entire painting using just her 15 colors. And actually, I'm using fewer than the 15. I'm really just using two of the reds and one of the greens and a yellow and then a deep blue at the end. And you'll see how much you can do with this. When you look at the colors in the palette, it's a little bit unappealing <laughs> because it sort of looks like there are a lot of browns in there. But like I said, there are just hundreds and hundreds of beautiful combinations that you can do with this palette that I'm just completely taken with. And so if you do not suffer from full set syndrome, like I do, 
then setting up a palette with these 15 colors would give you a lifetime's worth of shades and hues and all sorts of, of fun. So I highly recommend it. I have the book linked below and also on, on my blog. And I think it's the best money I've ever spent on a watercolor guide so far. <laughs> because we all know I'm going to buy some more watercolor guides. That's just the way it works. But I did want to talk to you about the way I'm doing the leaves. The colors that I'm using primarily are thalo green and quinacridone gold. That's how I mixed that custom leaf color that you saw me mix. But then I'm also coming in with a dark, dark blue. I'm using phthalo blue to, and ultramarine also, I believe, to come in and do the deep, dark shadows on both the roses and on the leaves. And you'll see me get darker and darker as this progresses. I usually leave my nearly black lowlights until the very end of a watercolor painting. And what I like to do to make sure that I'm not being afraid of contrast, because that's very, very easy to do, especially with watercolor, because it's sort of a delicate, transparent medium, is when I think I'm finished, and I do this with stamping as well, when I think I'm finished with a painting, I take a picture of it with my iPhone and I just change the filter on the photo to black and white. And I can instantly tell when I do that if I have enough contrast between the darkest parts of a painting and the lightest parts. Most of the time, it comes out just looking like a medium toned gray monochromatic painting. And then I know I have to go back in with deeper, darker shadows. Deep, dark shadows are really what will make your painting pop and make the images look more realistic and more three-dimensional. Especially with these flowers, the dark shadows are where you get all of the illusion that you're looking at a three-dimensional object. So don't be afraid at the end of a painting to come in and do what you're going to see me do, which is add nearly black colors. I never actually use black. Most people who watercolor don't use black. We custom mix dark shadows, but a deep dark blue will definitely get it done for both red roses and that green foliage. And at the very end, you'll see me do, you probably think it's crazy, you'll see me do really, really dark accents, but it's what makes the flowers more realistic. So like I said, the reason that I did this painting is the lines were a little bit too bold. For me, they sort of intruded into the image more than I wanted them to for a watercolor. Now just for stamping, it's fine. But to be able to watercolor something that looked realistic, I needed to not have those heavy lines there. So I took the lines away completely. And that's really my favorite way to watercolor anyway is no line watercolor. I think it's what makes a stamp image look like a painting and not have that dark outline around your images. On the second group of roses, I got a little bolder with the red. I had added a little bit of the red to each of the leaves anyway. This is something I was telling them on my call that I really like to do. If I'm doing something like flowers and leaves, I like to have all the colors that are present in the flowers also be present in the leaves, even if it's just a little bit subtle. That's the harmony that you get when you make sure that your colors are present everywhere across your painting. So this is a number two silver brush black velvet silver brush and really that's small enough for most detailed things that I do I do have a much finer paintbrush that I will do details with like for example 
If you saw photos of the oranges that I painted for my sketchbook during World Watercolor Month, the texture of the orange I did with this little teeny weeny brush. But for the most part, and I'm a pretty detailed watercolor painter, I'm fine with a number two. I definitely can't draw and I don't have any desire to be ultra, ultra realistic when I do stuff like this. So that's small enough to get most details on most normal sized images. So here with the ultramarine, you can see where I've gone in and done those darker shadows and how that ends up looking so different from this sort of graphic image that it started with. Now here at the end, I got a little extra paint. So I'm just getting that wet and then blotting it with a rag. And that will clean up any little extras you have. But if you have extras, don't worry about it. It's art. So thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions for me, you can leave them in the comments.